This is a piece of copper, four inches wide, 32 inches long, and a half inch thick. And I've got it sitting at a 10 degree angle up against the workbench. I've got my inclinometer on here to indicate that. And let's put this uh, three quarter inch flat magnet on there and see what happens. Pretty amazing. Let's put this one on here. Doing about the same thing, but then that took a, a tumble. Let's put uh, this cheap ceramic magnet on there and see what happens. Oh, we know what will happen. Just slid down the ramp. This is quarter inch thick aluminum, or if you're in the UK, it's aluminium. And there are a lot of you out there from the UK, and thanks for watching. And this is also at about 10 degrees, and watch what happens. Hmm, about the same effect as the copper, and the copper was much thicker. One more time. Now with a thicker magnet, such as this one, it will just tumble and roll off because it uh, has to do with the center of gravity. So it needs to be a flat magnet to do that particular experiment. Here's a piece of copper roofing, relatively thin. Same thing. This is two inch wide, eighth inch thick aluminum. Doesn't seem to make a whole lot of difference what the thickness is, and I'm getting uh, repetitive here, so I'll move on to just a few more things and I'm done. This is two inch aluminum angle, eighth inch thick, and with my very smallest magnet, when I put that in the trough, you'll see that it will roll down, but relatively slowly. And uh, same thing with the large one. Doesn't seem to make any difference as far as the speed is concerned. This is one inch aluminum angle. Even if you do not like my experiments, you probably notice that I do have a huge inventory of different materials. This is my 22 pound block of uh, 2 inch thick solid copper. It cost me a dollar some years ago. And uh, you've seen it in other videos. I've used it for a heat sink when I do some of my molding. So it's handy for that. Boy can it suck the heat. Okay. Here's my big magnet. Now watch this. This is most interesting. As I drop it. You know, why doesn't it drop like this? It's because of that induced current. Now watch this little fella out here. And you know, I know there's a lot of smart guys out there and college professors and uh, mathematicians and electricians and electrical engineers and you can feel free to make comments and I hope I get a lot of them explaining some of this because I am not explaining it in any kind of technical term. I'm just an old shop teacher as I told you and I find this interesting. But watch that little fella. Now, I, I really do not know if it's reacting to what I'm doing with the copper or if it's just because I'm getting near it and attracting it. Come home, baby. Come home to daddy. Come to daddy. This is, of course, aluminum. And apparently any metal that is uh, a good conductor Certainly silver would be even better to demonstrate this with, but I don't have any.
I wish I had a way of measuring the tiny amount of current that I am apparently inducing. Well, I just broke this magnet. Looks like a puppet on a string. You know, Lenz's Law was formulated uh, oh, almost 200 years ago but they didn't have these magnets to demonstrate it so much, but they knew all the math of it a long time ago. So it's not really new. The feel of doing this is uh, rather unusual. Let's take it a step further and let me drop it into this uh, thick wall aluminum tubing. Notice the string goes slack when I let go of it. Very unusual feeling doing this. That's aluminum tubing. As soon as this experiment is over, I have my work cut out for me to try to demagnetize it. I'm glad I got this thing. All of the tools and other apparatus that I have around here that's been contaminated with magnetism. Of all the apparatus and stuff that I have around the house here in the shop, I do not have an actual compass, at least not that I know of, but uh, here's the old standby that we did when we were kids, a needle floating in water. And I painted one end red, but uh, you can see that it's quite sensitive to uh, the magnet, even at a great distance. And right now this magnet is about 10 to 12 inches away. Although I don't think this is a particularly remarkable demonstration. However, when I use uh, one of these cheap ones, it has to be much closer in order for it to uh, affect the little needle. I'm now about three sixteenths away from the copper. This is even more dramatic, although maybe not a whole lot. And I can feel that. And of course, that's why I'm showing you this, because uh, you, you will not have that sense of feel. Every one of my magnets has become chipped in this experiment and uh, they're full of whiskers and I've lost several that are stuck on tools or fell to the floor and are on the cabinet or I don't know where they're at.
I hope I've stimulated your interest. Let me know if you like this long, long experiment or, uh, or am I wasting my time with such foolishness. This is Tubal Kane. Thanks for watching. Watch my hundreds and hundreds of other shop videos. This is getting a little bit away from what I usually do. And uh, so long for now.